I've always wanted to kind of live off grid, you know, just visit the city as opposed to actually living in the city. As I got older, I got into some sailing, and so it was like made more sense to be on the ocean. We started looking at land, and we wanted a bit of a community, and we wanted a bit of sunshine. Uh, we wanted people to be able to come visit, and we found this was a nice, happy medium. We're on a small island that's not too far away from the nearest town, and we've spent the past three years building a small cabin on our property. So we built it to be under 10 square meters, so uh, that's about 108 square feet. The whole island is off-grid. There's no utilities that come to the island. People have done a whole variety of things with that. There's some beautiful mansions on the island. There's places that have won architecture awards. Um, and, and then there's people like us in little cabins. The off-grid was uh, the only way to live here, and it's something we were looking forward to. Uh, but it's been interesting finding how off-grid works for us, because it's not the same for everyone. This island does have wells. We didn't have one when we moved here and we opted to not drill one because they are quite pricey. And so for the first well, we were able to go to the community well and take out um, water in jugs. And then we set up our rain catchment system. When it rains, the rain comes off the roof through the gutter system and it gravity feeds into the, the storage tanks. And then when it goes from the storage tanks into the house, it goes through a 12 volt RV pump. We found out that there was a banjo filter we could put in line, which is just a mesh filter and goes in there and I can take it out, remove any larger debris. The first system we built after we moved away from the jugs was two IBC totes. And so they're 250 gallons each, but we didn't have a shower yet. <laughs> um, so we installed the shower after that and realized we, we did need more water. Um, so we got a cistern and the cistern's 3000 gallons. So the IBC totes, when you get them, they're clear, and clear is an issue for algae growth because you get the sunlight in it and then you end up with green water. So we wrapped those in black plastic from the building store and we do bleach it occasionally. It's hard to calculate the bleach because you're always catching a couple of liters of water at a time. And, um, but we keep it bleached enough that we use it for dishes and showering and everything. And then we have a Berkey water filter for our potable water. We went with a wood stove for our heat off-grid. We thought about propane. It, it would have been more space efficient, but then you're reliant on a barge coming and filling up tanks. Um, and also we just love wood and it's free. Um, so we ended up with a, a Yodel 602, which was the smallest wood stove we could find that takes full-size wood. We didn't want those little eight inch chunks of firewood. We like to be able to light a fire, go to bed, and, and yeah, the fire's out when we get up in the morning, but it's a big cast iron stove and it'll still be 17 or 18 degrees in the morning most days. And we built it up on a platform, so we have kindling storage underneath. Um, and it also just brings the, the stove up to high level. You do have to put in the time. We can't have firewood delivered. It would cost way too much to bring over by barge. And we have the, the trees here um, to be able to, to support that. So we get our own firewood, we split it, and then have to stack and dry it. The splitter, you bring that here, you, you split the wood, and it's so much faster. We've never had to cut down trees for firewood. Um, we've, we either take windfall or it's trees that have been taken down for road maintenance or whatever. So for electricity, we have a generator and the generator leads to a battery bank. I was actually really lucky. I got an old battery bank off of a tugboat and some of the bank was fried, but there was four batteries that were still in good condition. Um, so we have 780 amp hours of electrical storage and the entire cabin is wired for 12 volts. We do have an inverter. We run it really just to charge laptops occasionally. Yeah, we have Wi-Fi on the island. It's um, a radio system, basically a dish pointing at another tower. And uh, yeah, it's a 24 volt system and we're 12 volts, so we have to convert the power over. But, so that's the biggest draw. We run the generator for three or four hours once a week, usually. We would love to have solar. We don't have a lot of sunlight, so it's not high on our priority list. It's just not gonna be efficient enough to make it a push to get it installed. So we are, isolated on the island and that you can't go to the grocery store, you can't run to the hardware store. So you have to think a little bit further ahead about what you're gonna need. Always liked making lists, but they're really important now um, to really make sure that you know what you're gonna need and you plan out how to get it because it takes time to get materials to the island. Off island on the, the other side, we have a vehicle over there 
and it's very handy to have a truck over there. You can haul things around and, and pick things up from the store, bring it to the boat. We also have a 15 foot inflatable um, with a 40 horsepower on it, so we can go back and forth. It works really well in the summertime, springtime, um, but in the wintertime, we don't usually use it. It's, it's kind of too rough, it's open. Um, we also have a sailboat, but it's, it's quite a bit slower, so it takes a lot longer. Um, and we've also have wonderful neighbors who have lent us their boats to, to bring bigger things over. And there's also a water taxi that runs to the island. He runs most days in the summer and then in the winter. He's not running every day, but he'll, he'll still come get you if you need a ride. But yeah, lots of different ways of commuting over here. But you have to think about anything that comes to the island has to be either brought over by barge, boat, or you're swimming it. <laughs> This place, it's 108 square feet, but Phoebe worked it out really well. There's 11 windows in this little tiny place, and almost all of them look down on the ocean view. But yeah, 11 windows in this size of a place is great. So it's eight feet by 13 feet and 14 feet high in the front and 12 feet high in the back. The front door comes into the kitchen with a sink and the stove and the water filter. And we have an old propane fridge. Um, so down in the shed, which is, um, 100 feet down the property. We built a couch against the back wall with storage, like a love seat with storage. And then in the corner is our wood stove on a little platform. And then we have a small desk or dining room table and a ship's ladder up to the loft. And above the kitchen is the sleeping loft. Between the front door and the ship's ladder, we have storage for coats, shoes, and the dog's little area. We're, we're still working on it. Um, we're, we're almost done at this point. We just have the ceiling to put on and we actually do have the wood for the ceiling. It's reclaimed tongue and groove from a 1930s house. It's just stacked in the, the front yard. We got it a few days ago. Yeah, we have an outdoor shower. Um, this place is too small for an indoor shower, but the outdoor shower is a hot water on demand, which also feeds the hot water for the cabin. We do outdoor showers year round. The outhouse, when, when we did get it, it was a shingle roof. Mm -hmm. And so it was very dark in there. And so I took the roof off and put on a, a clear, like the plastic corrugated roof. And so you get a lot more light in there. And then we get the, the rainwater catchment for washing hands. We've been living in the cabin a little over two years, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Feels like longer for sure, but in a good way. We would have finished faster if we waited until we'd finished building before we moved yeah. in. There's always going to be things that in an ideal world would be different. Um, we, we did build the house so it was facing directly into not the prevailing wind, um, but the direction that the big storms come from. So about twice a year, we get a huge storm out of the northeast and it slams right into the front of the house. Um, so if we'd rotated the whole thing 15 degrees so it wasn't coming straight onto the front, that would have been really smart. But thankfully it doesn't happen very often. The only thing I would change about the actual building is the front door would be great on the back. Um, because the, the wind and the rain in the winter comes from the, the northeast, like you open the door and you know it's all wet out there. Or if it was in the back on the shorter side, it would be less, less weather. I wish we had a laundry machine. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, we do our laundry in a bucket with a plunger and hang it up on the line and that gets old really fast. It didn't originally start that we were gonna kind of grow our own stuff and we're still trying to develop what the gardening can be because we don't get tons of sun here but we are trying to grow a whole bunch of stuff that we can you know eat and not have to go out and buy. We have two pretty good gardens set up at this point. We have one right behind the house um, which is on the ground and then we have another one which we made tall raised beds out of damaged roofing material. And we're nowhere near self-sustainable, but it is nice to have fresh vegetables and herbs and everything. Um, it's still spring, so nothing's up yet. I work in the marine industry, and so I work long contracts. Um, I, I've recently changed to a job that's a bit shorter, but it's still two weeks on, two weeks off when I have to leave. I, I mean, I do have to keep an eye on the weather, make sure I can get to my flight, um, but it's still only once every two weeks. So uh, there are people on the island that commute every day. It would be hard. Yeah, I used to work off island and it was sort of difficult to come back and forth. When I was there, I wanted to be here. And so I decided that um, after talking around to a few neighbors that I could start up my own uh, handyman job 
and just sort of doing odd jobs around. Everything from chopping wood with a splitter to, you know, cleaning gutters and roofs or even just uh, looking at electrical systems for people. I get to live on island and work on island and we just recently got the puppy so he gets to come over to work with me. Um, between purchasing the land, purchasing all the materials, the time we spent building, um, that was expensive. Having done all of that, there's very few costs associated now. So our expenses on the island at this point, we do have strata fees. And then other than that, it's just gas, propane, and food. And propane, we go through oh, probably 30, 40 pounds a month. Yeah. Something like that, um, between the shower, the stove, and the fridge, and the barbecue. And then gas, probably go through 60 liters between the, the vehicle and the generator and the outboard. We do have property taxes, um, but it's rural and undeveloped, so it's they're pretty low. Expectations versus reality. So I think I was actually surprised by how efficient the electrical system was. I imagined it being a lot more candles and you know only turning the light on when you really need it, um, and it's not like that at all. It's so much easier to live off grid than it would have been you know, like even 10, 20 years ago. You're so aware of how much water you're using, how much power you're using, how much waste you're creating. I mean, yes, I'd love to not be using the generator, but we still know exactly how much fuel we're using in it. Um, and we're conscious of that because we have to bring it over and think about it. There's so many things that I love about it personally. To be able to be here and see just the power that the ocean can have from being calm, like on a day like this where it's like a lake, to all of a sudden days where you can't cross and it's, it's so powerful and you get to just sit there and enjoy it. It's, it's definitely harder in the winter than it is in the summer. The summer is, is sort of the iconic off-grid lifestyle. It's beautiful, it's warm, you get late nights, like long days. The winter is, especially in, in BC, um, you get the darker winters, you get the windstorms, it's wetter. I definitely think the, the pluses outweigh the minuses, otherwise I don't think we would be here. Um, but it's different lifestyle, not for everybody but it's great to experience and see if you can do it. Please share this video if you liked it. Also, be sure to subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. Thanks for watching.